Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, February 9th. Tesla, and specifically Tesla's autopilot feature, has been cleared from blame in the highly publicized fatal crash that was reported to have no one in the driver's seat. In April of 2021, a strange and tragic accident happened in a Tesla in Spring, Texas. At the time, the local media presented the accident as being an autonomous vehicle crash, but Tesla does not have such a system and especially has nothing close to that for consumer use. But as it turns out, data from the car's event data recorder, which kind of acts as a black box, indicated that autopilot was not even active at the time of the crash. And now two years later, Tesla has been fully vindicated in the accident as the NTSB has released its final report on the crash, and they found no evidence that autopilot was involved. Of course, this doesn't really bring closure for the families of those who were lost, and it's certainly not over for Tesla. The NTSB and Tesla have been at odds for years now, and the agency has opened up dozens of investigations on Tesla crashes and believes that the automaker's full self-driving capability package is misleading. Although the misuse of the product is impossible to completely eradicate, a case such as this could be used in the future to support the claim. Tesla's former head of AI, Andre Karpathy, announced that he is joining OpenAI, an AI startup originally co-founded by Elon Musk. Karpathy joined Tesla more than five years ago and is credited for building Tesla's machine learning and computer vision team. He quickly rose through the ranks and became a big part of Tesla's autopilot team as well, and the automaker developed their effort of a full self-driving system. In March of 22, Karpathy announced that he was going on sabbatical that wound up being permanent. But now today, he has announced that he is joining OpenAI. The company is famous for its chat GPT chatbot based on a large language models, and it was actually originally co-founded by Elon Musk as a nonprofit. As a matter of fact, in 2018, Elon Musk left OpenAI's board and cited a potential conflict with Tesla's own AI effort as a reason for severing ties with the company. Now that the former head of Tesla's AI is joining, are we seeing a conflict arise again? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section on YouTube. A Tesla Powerwall owner in California who is on the virtual power plant system reported making over $500 in only half a year. A virtual power plant consists of distributed energy storage systems, such as Tesla's Powerwall, and is used in concert to provide grid services and avoid the use of polluting and expensive peaker power plants. Tesla and PG&E launched the program and back in June, actually, and Tesla is now reporting to be sending payments at least one of $575 in revenue for that one homeowner. This appears to be the higher side of the payment range since they actually have three power walls on the property. Looking ahead, as the virtual power plant expands and becomes more efficient, it's possible that we could see owners earning between $500 and $1,000 a year. This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, hosts of the WCX World Congress Experience event. For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. After announcing its return to Formula One in the dynamic new partnership with Red Bull, Ford Motor Company teased several EV performance demonstrators, including a high-performance electric truck. It's been over two decades since Ford has participated in Formula One, but the automaker's return is more than just racing. In an interview with Top Gear, CEO Jim Farley said that Ford is collaborating with Red Bull to develop a 350-kilowatt electric motor that will fit the new regulations. The automaker will provide technical expertise with the partners to explore battery cell and electric motor technology. Ford shared a tweet in which Jim Farley is pulling back the sheet on a high-performance electric truck, presumably a souped-up Ford F-150 Lightning. Other performance EV demonstrators also include the Mustang Mach-E 1400 and Ford's electric supervan with nearly 2,000 horsepower. 
According to news from Lucid Motors, the automaker will offer its own $7,500 credit to buyers of select version of the Air Grand Touring and Touring through March 31, 2023. The Lucid Air Touring and Grand Touring starts at an MSRP of $107,400 and $138,000, respectively. An extra $7,500 off the price should be welcome since those vehicles do not qualify for the tax credits on account of the higher cost. In a way, Lucid Motors is both joining the early stages of a price war and also meeting customers with the tax credit savings that other vehicles qualify for. In order to qualify for Lucid's temporary EV credit, you got to follow their rules. The offer is not applicable to EVs with the stealth look, the Perlux interior, or the metal roof. You got to purchase an Air Grand Touring or Touring sedan no later than March 31st and take delivery by April 30th, 2023. Volvo Cars has shared its full year report for 2022 after a strong share of EV sales in the fourth quarter. Volvo's total percentage for the year more than doubled compared to 21, but the automaker warns that 23 could be challenging. Looking at the numbers, revenue was $32 billion for the year, up 17%, and operating income was around $2.2 billion, up over 10%. Unfortunately, excluding joint ventures and associates, Volvo's EBIT was $1.7 billion, down nearly 16%. Volvo Cars points out that the true highlight of the year was its EV sales. Its numbers for fully electric models was actually 11% of the total, more than doubling the 4% from the previous year of 2021. Looking ahead to 23, Volvo Cars expects double-digit sales growth while increasing the production volume of EVs. Just as long as there are no unexpected supply chain disruptions, we hope. General Motors announced a new first-of-its-kind, what they're calling direct supply agreement with Global Foundries for semiconductor wafers. Global Foundries will manufacture the wafers directly for key General Motors suppliers to build higher production volumes and promote better reliability. As the race to make and deliver electric vehicles in the auto industry heats up, automakers with the most reliable and efficient supply chains will likely win out in the end. That's why you're seeing General Motors build out its supply chain to include semiconductors, nickel, copper, lithium, and other critical components for EVs. Speaking of that, General Motors has advanced to the next round of bidding for a stake in mining company Vale's base metals spinoff. Vale is the largest producer of iron ore and nickel with contracts to supply OEMs like Tesla, Northvolt, and already General Motors to a degree. Back in December, Vale's management said that the base metals business has a lot of good value propositions, but needs a change in how it's managed, specifically with the board. Vale said that it is in advanced talks with potential high-profile partners, those with deep EV transition experience, and look to finalize a deal by the first half of 2023. And now sources familiar with the matter told Bloomberg that General Motors has advanced to the next round of bidding for a stake in Vale's base metals business. The news comes shortly after General Motors announced that it would be making an equity investment of up to $650 million in Lithium Americas to help establish the most extensive known lithium source in the U.S. The race for battery hegemony continues. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Frank Coffey says, Imagine how Tesla would be if they did have all the shapes and sizes of vehicles people need. Yes, Frank, I'm sure that Tesla sales would be pretty darn high if they had a small runabout, a truck, a van, or maybe a last mile delivery van. But there is also something to be said about the exclusivity that Tesla has had until now. In the early days, it served them quite well to have high profile customers and luxury status, and the near future will tell us if that status symbol will persist. My brother bought a cheap Lexus a long time ago, some 15 year old high mileage fancy Corolla, more or less, and Really, what happened is a lot of people responded as if it was such an amazing buy, like he was in a new economic class. Even with Tesla aiming to make a cheaper car, I wonder if it will still be a mark of prestige. Again, in the near future, we'll find out. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.